FTIR or ramen for chemical ID? That's a common question that comes up from our viewers. Now today, we'll review the two technologies and pit them against each other. Let's take a deeper dive. I'm Grant Coffey, and this is FLIR Prime. FTIR or ramen? It's a question we get all the time. Though many industry professionals and emergency responders know these terms, very few know what they mean. Today, we're gonna to talk about the science and the physics behind these two technologies and how they differ. Whether a presumptive or confirmatory ID, knowing the identity of a substance is desired for determining appropriate response tactics. Now, in previous episodes, we've covered various tools that can help with chemical ID, from field indicators like placards and labels to electronic sensors. There are confirmatory identification tools like GCMS that can be used in the field that tell us with specificity the exact chemical, not just the general family a chemical belongs to. Now, while GCMS is considered the gold standard for confirmatory identification for bulk and trace samples, not every hazmat team is equipped with this versatile tool yet. More commonly, field response teams have immediate access to a spectroscopic tool like Fourier Transform Infrared, FTIR, or Raman for presumptive identification of bulk samples. Now these tools provide the ability to presumptively identify a threat. This information helps responders perform initial scene, size up, select appropriate PPE, decide on response tactics, and even provide baseline personal protection. I get questions all the time asking about these terms. Not only what they are, but what's the difference between the two? And of course, which one is better for me? Now let's take a look. Both of these tools use the energy that is found in the bonds of the electrostatic attraction between two atomic particles to identify the spectral fingerprint, if you will, that's unique to each individual substance. Now these techniques are best for presumptive identification of bulk or non-trace levels. As we mentioned, both are spectroscopic techniques, meaning they use a spectral fingerprint to identify an unknown chemical and compare that fingerprint to known libraries to identify a substance. Now, Raman spectroscopy is based on inelastic vibrational spectroscopy and uses a laser to excite the molecules of the sample substance. It then measures the scattered light to identify that fingerprint. On the other hand, FTIR is based on absorption spectroscopy and looks at the wavelengths absorbed as light passes through an unknown sample. The two techniques are really considered complementary and have strengths and weaknesses depending on the type of sample material that's gonna be tested. Now, Raman is much better suited when dealing with minerals, carbides, dyes, oxides, and drug products, for example. And it deals better with embedded inclusions and water than FTIR does. Sample preparation isn't really complex and can be used to sample materials in any state of matter. But not everything is capable of producing Raman spectra, and others tend to fluoresce too heavily and interfere with vibrations. So FTIR is comparatively less expensive and maintains a much larger library database. FTIR can't be used with closed containers though, like glass vials, plastic baggies, etc so the sample must be removed and then analyzed directly. That potentially exposes the first responder to a chemical hazard. You know, that's pretty heady stuff. So where does that leave us? It really boils down to the fact that both are great field tools that are indispensable for initial scene response. Budget notwithstanding, I believe it's a good idea to have complementary equipment in your toolbox. Using your cues and clues to make an early assessment and then employ these presumptive tools for an idea of at least the family of chemical you're dealing with. But for various reasons, a specific confirmatory identification from a GCMS may be needed or desired. Having both presumptive and confirmatory identification tools in your kit is a good idea. As always, we've included a great download with a field guide and more information about these two great technologies. Check out our other episodes at flir.com prime. Thanks for watching.